हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल टेक्सटाइल ज्ञान माय सेल्फ प्रकाश कुड़े असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एम एल टेक्सटाइल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज बिलवाड़ा टुडे इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल कवर दी वेब स्टॉप मोशन एंड बेसिकली वी विल टॉक अबाउट दी साइड वेब वर्क मोशन सो ऑल एज वी नो दैट द वेब स्टॉप मोशन इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑक्जिली मोशन ऑफ योर लूम एज द ऑक्जिली मोशन आर इम्पॉर्टेंट टू improve your quality of fabric at the same time improve your productivity of your loom so the basic objective of your web stop motion is to stop the loom as soon as the web has been being inserted it has been break in between your transit or there could be the chances if there is a no web in the shuttle so during that time we need to stop the loom if the loom has not been stopped so that will ultimately causes the formation of your cracks to avoid this formation of your crack in the fabric the web stop motion is much more important so this motion is therefore must for your high speed loom specifically if you are producing your expensive fabric so there are basic two different types of web stop motions are there one is your side wave work motion another is your center wave work motion so basically we cover about this in this video that is side wave work motion in my next video we'll talk about the center wave work motions so as the name suggests that the side wave work motion it has been mounted on only one side of loom that is on the starting handle side so in this figure we'll see the basic different parts and how the mechanism has been work in this side wave work motion so if you know that the basic drag go comes to this side wave of motion that is coming from your bottom shaft a is your bottom shaft on this bottom shaft there is a cam has been mounted if you see here b is the cam which has been fixed to the bottom shaft a and this cam is touch on the top of that there is a lever we normally call as a greyhound tail lever or hammer lever and this lever is connected to the hammer d which is if you see in this hammer there is a notch also there i will talk about why this notch has been important in this case and this if you see here there is a web fork in this figure this web fork if you see it is generally made up of your thin metal and it has usually the three prongs or we normally say that this is similar to your the spoons with the fork fork spoons in this the three prongs has been bent at the right angle and it has been fulcrum at the front end by f if you see this is the fulcrum point of this web fork and it has been screwed by the spindle g and this spindle g is coupled with the web fork lever i and which is always in contact with your starting handle and a channel or groove has been k here if you see here the k which is the groove is in cut in the race board to get the fork when slay comes forward to the for the bit of however this fork is undisturbed as long as the web has been it is touched by your web across the channel from the selvage to the shuttle box between this reed and the mouth of your box there is a grid if you see this grid which is acting as a support for your web and it enables to raise your web fork so we'll see how this web fork motion has been working in the presence of your web at the same time in the absence of your web how this mechanism has been work so before that think of your side wave for motion this we seen that this is your bottom shaft on this bottom shaft there is a cam we can see the hammer lever being moved up and down by the cam but this is your hammer This view shows a weft thread lying on the race board. Due to the weft tension, the hooked tail end of the fork is raised and so the loom continues to run. 
In this view, there is no weft. We can see the hooked tail end of the fork is on the hammer. In this action, see the hammer pulling the hooked tail end that causes the starting handle to be released. So in this video, we have seen that how the webhook motion has been worked in the presence of your web and in the absence of your web. So basically, see the working of this webhook motion. As I already said that when this cam has been ultimately mounted on your bottom shaft, when this bottom shaft has been rotated, the cam also rotates and this hammer lever will ultimately gives this moves up and down it will move up and down and due to that this hammer will ultimately moves to and fro or we can say that forward and backward movement of your hammer has been taken place since the hammer getting its motion from your bottom shaft it will only get forward one forward movement and one backward movement for every two picks for every two picks it gets the only one forward movement and one backward movement for every two picks. So we'll see in the presence of your web how this mechanism will act and then in this presence of your web we need to run the loom without any fault. So when loom is running if web is lies in between your fork and the grid in between your fork and this is your grid and Therefore, the fork tilts and the hook end of your tail has been raised. If you this see here, this is a prong when there is a web is there in between your in front of your fork and the grid. So due to that, it this front end of the US fork has been comes in contact with your web. So due to that tension in your web, so the this end has been tilted backward and due to that the hook tail end has been raised up. When hook tail end has been raised up, so it will clear off your hammer notch and loom will continue to run. So we'll see the next when webbed has not been present. So in absence of your webbed, how this mechanism has been work. So in when webbed is absent, this strong fork will push inside the uh, grid freely so this will go inside this grid when this grid it is ultimately mounted in front of your prong in the race board or on the slay so this leaves this fork in this position as shown in this figure when this hammer moves forward when this hammer when it moves forward so it will carry this fork with it and this fork will in turn moves this web fork lever which therefore knock off the starting handle. So that will ultimately shifting this driving belt from fast pulley to the loose pulley. So in absence of your web, this web fork ultimately goes to the grid. So this at the back end of this or we can say the tail end of your fork has been rest onto this in front of this notch of your hammer and when hammer has been moved forward so so this taking this whole arrangement to the forward the screwed spindle has been moved forward so due to this this will ultimately strike to the starting handle the starting handle has been comes from the on position to the up positions so in this we can see that how this webfork motion has been worked in the absence of your weft. So during absence of your weft, the fork tail hand will not be raised off. So due to that, it will stay in this raised position. So when slay has been moved forward, so during that period, hammer lever is also moving forward. So due to that, it will comes in contact with your hammer notch and this spindle 
screw spindle it will be also carrying this whole assembly and that will stop the loom so, so this is the basic working of your side wafer mechanism so thank you so much guys for your kind attentions don't forget to subscribe my channel like share and comment this video till that stay tuned to my channel